All right, Coach, congratulations on tonight's win. Uh, can you just give us uh, your initial thoughts on tonight's game? Yeah, I thought the guys played played hard. I, you know, it pretty much unfolded how I thought it would in terms of not the score. I didn't know which team was going to win, but I expected it to be a, a, a very close game, very tight. Um, I was, you know, we got we were f fortunate. We had, we were finding the back end up and and uh, you know fin finishing off our chances. But I'd say it was a pretty even game. Um, I was very happy with how we you know we played the third though, even though uh, you know it was four one. I felt like we kept. You know they, they were throwing a lot at us, um, and I thought the guys, you know, for the most part, played very well. I thought Noah played well in net. Um, probably the kill, the start to third period was, was a big kill. Um, that, you know, you just look at pivotal moments. Well, geez, you know, they got 20 minutes. They're down three. They score there, and then all of a sudden the complexion changes. And you can even feel that when they scored on their next power play. Um, I think there was 12 minutes to go in the game, and you're looking at that, going, oh, two goal lead, 12 minutes. That's, that's a lot of time. So I thought that that kill was so important when we started the uh, started the third period. I asked Coach Coach Kaufman this uh, during the intermission, but like, what's so crucial about maintaining these higher leads, like four to one? What goes into, like, you know, it's a difference between just one goal deficit and then three goals. Yeah, it's huge. The, the, the issue with a a lead like that is you worry the guys will stop playing, um, or they'll just want to defend the lead, and you know, you got to keep playing the game aggressively the, the way you, you know that you had the whole night tried to add the fifth you got to got to look at it that way and we you know we had a great chance it was four two and there was a two on one I think uh at best maybe hit um oh who did he hit 18 um he hit him back door anyways he had a great chance it was Caleb Erging I don't know down and, and the kid made a heck of a save, but I thought that was going to be in the back of that five two six minutes game over. So, um, but you got to keep pressing. You can't just sit back. And then once you lose the momentum, if they start scoring, it's hard to get it back. It's, you can't just flip a switch. So you got to try to keep that momentum going. Was there a strategy coming into tonight's game? Obviously, having a tough loss just a week ago. Yeah, we kind of divorced ourselves from that loss, and just because it was such a weird weird way that happened and that it was three nothing with seven minutes to go in the game and uh, we were actually playing pretty well you know I, I thought it was a one goal game and then you know when we took the five minute major that's where the bottom fell out but so we just try to concentrate in the five and a half periods of good hockey we played and what we did right and the things that we could do better and that's what we and we didn't we didn't get too hung up on the result very uh, solid defensive output in the second period with three goals of the four in total. What generated those three goals? You know, I that's good. There's some really good individual plays. I, the shorthander, the, I know that's the first period. It's not your question, but the shorthander that was a great play. Erging made that feed to to Davida. That was really a, a great play. What a lift that was. Um, and then. You know, we got a, a power play goal, which was great. You know, it's the first one of the year, so we were glad to, to get that monkey off our backs. Um, yeah, I, I, I thought territorially we, we, we established a, a better forecheck in the first period. We turned a lot of pucks over at the, like, just really bad turnovers. And I felt as the game went on, particularly the second period, we did a better job of managing the puck. Uh, Corvac gets his uh, first collegiate goal. What do you have to say about him? No, oh, that won't be his last. I'm telling you, boy, he's uh, he's a good hockey player, and he's really he's getting better with each and every game. And uh, I, you know, we had him out there, a power play today, penalty kill, late in the game with the goalie pulled. I mean, he he saw a lot of ice time, um, but he's you know he's just a good all-around player like he can play well in the offensive zone he's he's very reliable defensively he plays through bodies yeah he's he's you know the real deal uh, the beer and John Marie get on the score sheet tonight how helpful is it to have uh, defensemen that can get into back in that yeah it was great it was a really good shot by Xavier um, wow what a release um, so that was that was obviously a big goal there, and then yeah, to get the Vita on the board too, it's it, it helps when we're when we're getting scoring from the back end. That's that's a real bonus. The 
this not to ask. You're sitting at 499 career wins with the chance to get your 500th at home tomorrow. Um, what's the thought process there? Uh, yeah, no. Great question. There is no thought process. Just let's just go get a win. Let's go two and zero in conference. That's really what matters the most. If we can get off to a two and zero start, that would be huge. Correct me if I'm wrong. Was were they picked by the media to win the league, Bemidji, or and the coaches even? I don't know. I, I, maybe it was St. Th I can't St. Thomas maybe. But anyways, they were picked up pretty high, and they're a good team and. Well, it would be, I think it would do a lot for our confidence if we could pick up another win and and learn to, to you know how to come away on a weekend with two wins. I think that would be huge. Plus, it's parents' weekend. Who doesn't want to win in front of their parents, right? All right, thanks, guys. Yeah.